She said, ready whenever you are. She's not ready. Right. Okay. Because this thing says, uh, hold on a second. Let's go. <laughs> okay, now I'm live. Because, you know, I'm forgetting to turn off my uh, Wi Fi. My Wi Fi. It was actually. So, anyway, how are you guys doing today on this lovely Sunday afternoon? It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan throwing rocks and hiding his hands to deep. Um, I'm trying to see if I'm actually live on here because it asked me if I wanted to just record it or go live. So we'll wait a second or two to see if somebody pops up. I will. I yeah. will verify that. Okay, for me. and there's one person on. Right, so yes, I'm live. <laughs> I'm live. All right, and so the purpose of this show is. To discuss things in the black community that promotes love, knowledge, understanding, and just everything in order to make us a better people. And so, um, as always, thank you to Donovan for putting this all together. YouTube, the podcast, uh, being here, helping me co-host on Facebook. And to you all in Facebook land, the audience who gives me all questions and the occasional podcast question. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Without you guys, we could not have... A successful dialogue here and so once again thank you for that and so and uh, let, me, let, let me cut you off right there mm-hmm. if you hear uh, Demetra's voice cracking she <laughs> is under a uh, yeah, yeah I, a little sick I sound like I got like a frog or right. something in my throat so right so yeah it's uh it's, it's going it's mm-hmm. coming it's going so my voice will come and go I'm starting to sweat too now so anyway it's probably good for me so Let's get started, shall we? Hey, Tay. Hey, Gina. What's happening? All right. So I originally was going to take this discussion somewhere else. But then when I got to doing some research, I was like, oh, okay, I I, got to change courses because, well, I'll get into it. So you guys have a little bit of background here. So bear with me now. So we learned about a week ago that we lost the legend, the queen of soul. Everybody knows that, right? I hope so. All right. Um, Due to pancreatic cancer, she was 76 years old and left behind four sons to mourn her death. But most shockingly, we also learned that she died interstate or she did not leave a will. So she basically died without a will or any type of final. You know that? No, I didn't. Are you serious? Yeah, I haven't been following her. Okay. She died without a will. Wow. Or any final instructions. Wow. I thought you knew that. No, I didn't know. Okay. Um. To her, um, assumed $80 million estate. Now, per Detroit, Michigan law, her estate will go to her four sons Mm -hmm. who are her next of kin. Now, one of her sons is deemed to be special needs, so he'll have a conservator or somebody Mm -hmm. um, to uh, handle his part of the funds, whatever those funds may be. All right. Now, Aretha's lawyer of over 30 years, her entertainment lawyer, said that he had begged her for years to set her final instructions in order, but she just never got around to it, and that's what he was saying. And so, um, Aretha's sons have agreed to allow her niece, Sabrina Owens, to act as her administrator over her estate. They just did it, you know, because we know that when people die, especially without a will, and they have that, I mean, you know, a person could die with two peanuts, and the whole family, they're going to fight over those two peanuts, mm-hmm. and so... Um, To make the process easier, the sons, the three sons that uh, can speak for themselves, and and it sounds like uh, whoever the conservator of the uh, son with special needs said, you know what, let's appoint the niece uh, to uh, delegate and just do everything. As a neutral type person. Yes, because we know if that gets, they they fight, it gets tied up in probate court and all of that. A lot of people don't realize Mm -hmm. this. When you have a loved one that is like terminally ill Mm -hmm. or they're going through that, you know, you know, the the end is going to come. Right. And I, you know, a lot of us don't know this. You need to secure the house and everything, everything we, we because you got aunt, yeah yeah you got yeah. Aunt Celeste that'll come in there and take the photo album or you know pictures. Right. I mean I'm I'm not you know I'm not joking. No, I'm serious. I, 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 and listen, yeah. I've seen it happen. Yeah, right. I've seen so. you know you know a, 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 my grandmother's a good example. Mm-hmm. She passed 
and these people are coming in and out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather's still alive. Mm -hmm. And people are coming and just pillaging you. We're like, wait, hold on, stop. So you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Now, when we hear about the word estate, we really just think about money. But there's so much more to an estate than just money. In Aretha's case, she amused, or amused, amassed rather, royalties, movies, books, a music catalog, her image, uh, post-humanist, human, yeah. humanist, yeah. however you say it, wealth, mm-hmm. and many other potential streams of income that is attached to the late singer. Now, one also has to take into account the taxes yes. that will come from all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the potential debt because they said that it's rumored that she was also in some debt. So yeah, yeah. they'll have to put all those things, things together and um, yeah, just trying to figure out okay, what's going on know, here. You know, and, and you know, and, and it's so sad in our community mm-hmm. that our athletes, our entertainers, and I'll get to you guys. They're, comments they're always too. in debt. After you've, you've you've seen so many examples of James Brown, I mean all these you know you, you just right. go down down the list. But um, I got a listener listening in. Mm-hmm. This is my good friend I was stationed in Alaska with. Her name is uh, Mia Laidner. Hey Mia, and she is going to Cal Poly Pomona to get her degree all right now. over there in bio, working on her master's. Ooh. So I well, wanted to give her a shout out. Good right luck there. in the master's program. You will do just fine. Yes, yes. And so now, um, lastly. Because she did not have a final wishes for her estate, Damn. her niece Sabrina has to basically speak for the dead. Now, what do I mean by that? Mm-hmm. Um, for example, just because Aretha's sons were her next of kin, that doesn't mean that Aretha wanted them to be the beneficiary to all of her stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe she wanted to give her money to her church or maybe to somebody else. Mm-hmm. But because she didn't leave that in writing, Instruction, right. you know, her niece is now tasked um, with the job or same thing. We're trying to figure out what her aunt would have wanted. wanted. Right. Okay, so her aunt maybe wanted her son, this son to have $10,000 and that son to have a million. So she has to do that. And it's a very, very, very big job that more than likely is going to take a long time. time to and figure some people it out. are not going to be happy. Right. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, they trusted her niece to do it. Mm-hmm. And so um, all of this honestly could have been avoided if. Aretha would have just left a will, a living trust, something that would have given instructions to, uh, for her final wishes. But we know, as we said, she didn't do that. And so um, this week, we're going to be discussing the importance of having our final wishes in order for our loved ones, among in all kind of stuff in regards to uh, money in the black community. But as I was doing some research, because like I said, I was going to take this in another direction in um, regards to black people and the lack of life insurance and stuff like this. But as I was researching, I was like, oh, there's something different going on. And, I, and here I go. So do you know uh, that contrary to popular belief, black folks are two points more likely to be insured than the general population? So Ooh. that is to the tune of 60 percent. Um, versus the, the um, regular population of insured people in America. Also, um, most um, most um, in, in insurance propaganda tells us that black people are underinsured or we don't have um, as much insurance as everybody else. And that is also a lie. Now, but when you look at um, married Co- uh, cohabiting and single households, it shows black people are holding most insurance, the most insurance, because when they do these tests and stuff, and I promise you guys, I'm going to get to your comments, when they do these tests and these samples and these surveys and stuff, they only weigh the married households. Mm-hmm. And so, what's the problem with married households in the black community? We don't have a lot we of We don't have a lot of married, married households. households. Right. And so, when you um, look at just the married households, of course, Black people look underinsured or mm-hmm. um, uninsured, mm-hmm. but like I said, we have to account for um, single parent households and just a, the, all the other things that are in the gray areas that we, as we would like to describe it. And so it comes out that black people are actually more insured than the general population. And I'll be honest with you, I would lie to, be lying to you if I, if I said that I wasn't one of the ones that were saying, well, you know, black people. We don't have insurance and no, we're underinsured. No, no, um, um, that's not true. You can get renter's insurance for $14 since a lot of us live in apartments and things like that. Right. And most single moms, you know, true. have 
Right, issues, issues exactly, and that's exactly the point. And it also says, um, <clears throat> let's see here, because I took quite a bit of notes. I'm almost done. But to your point, it says black folks are more than likely to participate in employee-provided insurance mm-hmm. than any other group. So, mm-hmm. like you said, with the renter's insurance and stuff, mm-hmm. and I don't know the data on that, but if it's for a couple bucks or free, then yeah, why not, yeah. right? Yeah. Now it says in 2016, 75% of black people purchase life insurance okay however black folks pay higher insurance rates due to health and lifestyle um due to lack of yes. wealth so mm-hmm. we know that when there's lack of wealth there's stress and you're you eating know, poorly eating diet right. right so on the um, morbidity table or um the morbidity rate i guess mm-hmm. that's how they it's determine higher. determine um i guess like classifications of uh gender and race and stuff and so we know traditionally Black people, and that's a fact, we have really bad eating habits. And so, Mm -hmm. more than likely, we're going to die before a lot of other people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, it also said that black folks are more open to buying life insurance now more than we have been in the past. Okay? Now, I feel like it's important to spread knowledge and not lies. And let me just give you guys a little bit more statistics, and I'm almost done. Now... White household um, average net worth is about 190000 a year. Or, yeah, like, it's just, yeah it's, I saw that right. statistic. Black household average net worth is 19000 Less than $20,000 yes. a year. Yeah, I saw that. So 10%. Is 10, we're, so we're 10% of white um, household, um, average um, white wealth. Right. Only 10%. For every hundred dollars that they have, we have nine dollars. So then, and you listen, guys. I'm not a mathematician at all, so you know, don't hold me to numbers. But so then you say, well, how is it that black people are only ten percent of white wealth, but we have one point three trillion dollars in the um, African American community that comes in every year? How is that possible? Enough to make up what they say the ninth. Or the eleventh um, largest country. Yeah, we're in the top fifteen in the world. Mm-hmm. So how is that? So when people send me messages while I'm on, it kind of jacks me up a little bit. So <laughs> I hope you guys can see me. I hate when people do that. You see, I'm on here live. <laughs> you just won't let no, me be no, great. No, no and, 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 and what kills you about it? They know you're there at three to thing, right. and they still send you messages. But uh, so okay. I apologize for the glitches there, you guys. And so, all right. So how does that we? Um, only have 10% of white wealth, but we have $1.3 trillion coming in out of our, the black community every year. Well, we know that's how. What, how is because we don't practice group economics, mm-hmm. so we could be here all day with that, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, um, just I just handpicked a, um, a, a gender, a black male, so nothing, no shade to black men, mm-hmm. but black men, uh, males average um, life expectancy they said it's about 77 years or so um, like six years um, less than white women mm. that's that's the statistic that I saw right. now it says 12 percent of black males die around the age of 60 roughly after the age, 10 years after the age of 50 they said a lot of black uh, men die not too long after they retire or they um, or they stop working for whatever reason. And so, um, what else do I have? Because I, I was like, I learned a lot of stuff. And so, oh, thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm starting to bust a sweat, y'all. So, you guys can research this stuff if you want. I got these um, off the internet from Limra Study, Public Health Pulse, and uh, the United States Census. And so, I want, the question that I have for you guys is this. What myths or misconceptions have you guys heard in regards to black people and black money. And I'm going to get to you guys' comments. So, Donovan, if you want to think of one as I read these comments, let's see. Oh, no. The only thing I got to think about is our numbers were great last week for the show. And for those of you guys that saw uh, Cop with White Socks, Swings on. Oh, God. That was a great show as well. Oh, wow. We're on YouTube. Please check us out. Uh, the Dimitri, uh, Look up Dimitri K on YouTube and you'll see the video up there. Awesome. So, Tay says, hey. And Gina says, hey, girlfriend. What's happening? And Tay, you also say, I don't know who her lawyer was. Um, dying without a will is irresponsible. Yeah, the lawyer was, he said he tried to tell her, 
for many years. You need to get it together, but for whatever reason, she kept putting it off. See, uh, and then a good thing in the military that they started, it's a mandatory, you've got to have a will. Mandatory. Oh, well, yeah. Well, so, she should have been in the military then. Yeah. No, you know, I'm just saying if you're a young person, you first join, oh, yeah. and that's indoctrinated into you, mm-hmm. you're most likely going to carry that on into your civilian right. life as well. So. And it's you also say she, I never got around to it. She had 70 plus years to get her affairs in order. She was irresponsible. Yeah. Well, she I, comes from that generation of. Or then, you know, just to play devil's advocate here, which is not right. But maybe she thought, well, we live in Detroit. I died. They'll split my stuff four ways. But then you forget about the other relatives and people. Well, yeah. you know, right. Riri said I mm-hmm. can have the, the, the Fabergé right. egg on her, right. with her piano. Or, or, or that. Uh, cousin that married her real cousin that's not part of the family wants a cut of that empire. Or, you know, because the kids had different, and the kids, but they're, yeah. the kids are in their 60s, but they all had different, different dads, fathers. Yeah. And so, I don't know if the fathers are alive, but they can also get yeah. in the mix. Right. You know, so it's just a, it's just grandbabies. A, it's just a bunch. And then Allie says, I'm taking the girls home and I'm listening. And yes, I have insurance on my truck. What about your <laughs> life, brother? And Tay says, being a celebrity, she needed to manage her brand and make sure it was going to be taken care of after her death. I pray that her family doesn't ruin what she spent her whole life to create. Um, you know, in, in, in Aretha's defense, if you look at uh, her autobiography, you got, she was married in the, uh, I think, late 60s, early 70s to a man that uh, was really abusive, oh, abusive to her, to her uh-huh. and stuff. And um, from what I understand... Um, he was really controlling and controlling her finances. Oh, yeah. He didn't read the book of Ike correctly, but you know that could I don't be. I think it was written then. But 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 that could be a a, a problem in why her finances were. But y'all had to remember too. Yeah. You know, Aretha Franklin, R.I.P. She got out there very early in life. Right. I mean, she had her first child when she was thirteen, pregnant when she was twelve, 12 yeah. had her second when she was fifteen, and so. her father was very prominent. Right, mm-hmm. and so hey, Richard, and then you say. Um, why didn't her attorney draw up something and have her sign it? Her excuse is lame. No, absolutely. I mean, he said, it sounds like he vehemently tried to get her to do something. Hey, Holland. Um, I, I think that's the same thing as people who are afraid to fly on airplanes. You know, she was just stuck in a, you know, in Maybe her... she didn't think she was going to go nowhere anytime soon. Like, I got time to do that. Mm-hmm. And Al says, without um, a will, we, um, without a will, I think he meant to say, we all love her family. Maybe Aretha wasn't thinking what she was trying to do to them. You know what? Well, I mean, uh, re- uh, recently Prince did the same thing. <clears throat> right. $175 million estate that is now... And they're still fighting they're still over fighting what it sounds right. like. Mm-hmm. Right. And Tay says, I have life insurance and insurance on my children since birth. I have a will set up and advanced directive in place. I have learned from my grandparents and parents on how to set my children up for... Success, not debt and confusion. and That's, that's right. And I want a piece of that money so when we get married, <laughs> get that insurance. But that's exactly what it is. It's, you know, a lot of people, because I used to sell life insurance. And I want to say that to you guys right now. I always like to make this disclaimer. I do not have the ability to sell life insurance. So I'm personally not trying to sell you life insurance. But I sold life insurance for many years. And I worked in the financial services field. And so... I saw it all and I heard it all. Mm -hmm. And I would hear people say stuff like, well, I don't want to leave them rich. I I ain't talking about you. (laughs) Or, you know, um, I'm I'm not going to be here, so why do I care? Yeah, why would I care? But to Tay's latter point is, you should care because you're going to leave debt and confusion um, amongst the people who are still left here. And so Mm -hmm. that's, if you don't care about nothing else, you should care about that. Well, you know, and and if you don't want to leave nothing to your children, like I don't, uh, leave it to your dog or something. That way, whoever controls the dog will control the money. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, the money's going to go somewhere. Let me control the dog. (laughs) There you go. Get the dog. (laughs) But you know, but but my point is the money's going to go somewhere. So, right. You know, right. Okay. And Holland, you say my kids, let me make sure I didn't miss it. You said my kids are grown. I'm not married, so I get, um, so should I get insurance? Yes. The same on my own? Absolutely, yes. you should get insurance because um, insurance, well, it has a beneficiary, and so right. you know where it's going. Mm-hmm. And also, you don't leave debt and headache and confusion for the mm-hmm. people who will have to bury you because, yeah, it'd be nice if, you know, I, got to, I joke with my daughter. Throw my ass off the side of a mm. mountain and take the money and run. <laughs> right. But we know legally you can't do, do that. that. You mm. got to do something with your loved ones by or leave it in the morgue and then they'll cremate it and then. And then you'll you'll go into a, a record book and there's no headstone. No. Right. Who no. wants mom cremated right. by the city morgue right. because you couldn't take care of her 
however you want to do that. And so, yes, Holly, you should get life insurance. But listen to this. Life insurance is not just about burying you. It's also about leaving a legacy because that's what the wealthy do. Yes, that's they how they make only, their money. Right. They not only leave a legacy, but they also know that it's a good way to build wealth. wealth. Um, it's a good tax shelters mm-hmm. and all that type of stuff. And so, yes, you should have life insurance saving on your own saving versus life insurance. So let's say you go put $10,000 or whatever into a savings account. They're going to pay you what less than 2% to mm-hmm. save. And so you've given the bank $10,000 to reinvest, reinvest. with mm-hmm. other people. They give me a $10,000 loan at, I don't know, whatever, 13, 10%. Right. So the bank is making money off of your money when you could put it into a life insurance vehicle that would allow you to build cash value and invest it in some respects of the stock market. And so, yes, you should have life insurance. Hey, Dean, what's happening? Yeah, because, I, because I'm in the same position as he is. My kids are grown. I'm by myself. You should have life insurance to, to bury yourself, number one, and to, like you said, leave a legacy. Yeah, or something they, right. Them. You know, because that's in the black community. And uh, let me get to your point, Dean. He says, but we spend more than them on top of it. Yes. And that's where I was getting to with the $1.3 trillion that we have. How come we don't have the wealth? We give it away. We don't mm-hmm. keep... We only keep about 3% of that. So we're giving away 97% of our $1.3 trillion, which is how we only, on average, as black people, have nine, uh, 10% of what white households have at 190000 versus 19000 So that's we've got to change that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Taylor, you also say, uh, but, but to my back to my point, is that we in the black community got to get it out of our heads that, well... You know, I struggle, and so my kids got to struggle. They need to earn it like I did. Now, I agree with kids having to earn stuff, but I totally, totally, totally disagree with us making our children struggle and suffer because nobody else does that to their children. They make sure their children have the tools that they need to be successful. And that's why their kids go into movie theaters and shoot the place up. (laughs) But but let's talk about Asians and Arabs and and all these other people. They don't say, well, go kick rocks and struggle, Junior. Mm -hmm. They say, no, I have this business. I want you to learn business. Yes, I'm going to give you more than I have because more than likely those people came over here from a third world country and had nothing. So, yes, they don't want their children to have nothing, too. But they also teach them how to keep the money going and flowing. Mm-hmm. And so, agree. Tay, you say we are putting our money into the things that matter. We aren't saving for long. Well, you said we aren't putting money into the things that matter. Uh, we aren't saving for long term. We're just investing in ourselves and our children. You don't right. have to make $100,000 a year to invest in yourself. Absolutely. Let's stop buying Jordans. And- I'm an example of that. Okay, <laughs> and you know the stuff like you said that don't matter, weaves and all that. We we need to stop doing that because at the end of the day, Jordans get old and mm-hmm. we have to buy new ones and weaves. You know they get whatever they do. Speak. So hey, Asada, um, and then, uh, Asada says, "Hey, uh, brother, the uh, the mellow Holland." Mm-hmm. And then uh, Holland says, "Asada, what's up, sis?" So mm-hmm. obviously they're good friends. Yes, yes. And Al says, "I've heard some black people say if I get insurance and nothing happens, should I get my money back?" <laughs> The whole point is it's long term invest. <laughs> I would just like to say this. Do you want something to happen to you? <laughs> Do you want to get a bang for your buck? <laughs> you know, but that's why they have various life insurance policies because insurance companies understand that. I mean, let's be honest. They're playing the odds. Yeah, but our life insurance make money if you live, not die, die which is why right. they make sure that you're insurable and you're and healthy. You're healthy. Right. right. But they also understand that there's people who think like you in that, well, I don't want to be spending all this money and nothing to happen to me. And so in the meantime, they have a lot of insurance policies that will allow you to build cash value. Mm-hmm. So let's say sure. you insure your child, as uh, Tay did when they're a baby. Um, by the time they're 18, you might have enough money saved up in that insurance policy to where you can pay for their um, college education, depending on mm-hmm. how much money you put in, buy them a house, buy them a car. So mm-hmm. it's a it has, right. It has living benefits, and it's not just oh, well, if you die, you die. Well, I, I got a question for you in regards to insurance. Uh huh. Okay, you got all these Negroes out here and people of color uh, talking about oh, I gotta get Obama insurance and the ACA. I want that. It's good. You know, if you know that that's good for you in 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 health, and so you can go to the doctor and you know get fixed up and stuff like that. 
Why wouldn't you think that after your death, having insurance would be good for your family? Well, I think because a lot of us are not just black people, because I sat down with a whole bunch of people who had the ideology of, well, shoot, I'm going to be dead. Why would I care? Right. But I'm just saying, if they know that Obamacare is good for them to have, right. they have no problem giving their $13 a month or whatever they're paying, mm-hmm. why would they have a problem because mm-hmm. life insurance, like, I don't, I, a lot of people in their head think, I'm not going to benefit from that. But if you just sit down with the right person, they will tell mm-hmm. you if you, you invest are. in the right thing, mm-hmm. you can use the benefits, some mm-hmm. of the benefits while you can, you're still alive. Right, right. And then Al says, um, oops, you said, I'm glad you two are talking about insurance and no one else this week. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like who? And then um, he said, term or life, a Holland. So you're saying, uh, I think what you're asking me is um, term insurance. Or whole life insurance. Well, um, and I'll just be brief with the explanation of that. Term insurance is for a term. So if you get the term insurance for 10 years, it expires after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, however long mm-hmm. you get it. And so after the 10 years of that life insurance policy is up, you will have to get more insurance. But in 10 years, you're older. Maybe you've had right. some health problems. You might have gone through some surgeries. Right. Or- and so your insurance premium goes up at that point and listen i never knock term insurance because at least you're insured right. at least you have something term life is cheaper than the other um, policies now there's whole life which is what it says it's for your whole life or until the time you turn 100 years old in which it will expire in a way but you'll have those cash benefits the other one is universal life um policies in which it'll allow you to invest in the stock market with the, the difference. So it's like you have, um, just for um, terminology sake, so let's say you have a term policy or have the life insurance policy rather, and then you have the cash value that the, um, the money that you pay over the cost of the insurance. So the cost of the insurance is what you need to keep the insurance alive. So let's say in order to keep the insurance alive, you need $10 in that policy, but you say, you know what? I want to invest to, um, an additional 20 so that additional $20 will go to the stock market or whatever mm-hmm. uh, investment Dying vehicle stock, you right. choose but you still have that um, the, the, the $10 that's keeping the policy alive and so you have to decide do I just want term to take care of um, my final wishes or do I want some um, universal life policy or whole life policy that will give me some cash value while I'm still alive mm-hmm. And Tay says, thank you. We need to stop the struggle mentality. No, absolutely. And you also say, stop buying Jordans and start buying shares. Yes. Hey, Gay. And he says, thank you for educating our people on the importance of life insurance and investments. And Gay Nisha, I know, does sell life insurance. So you guys want to, you know, talk to Gay Nisha, hit her inbox. She can help you decide what's best for you. Wait, wait, wait what's her name? Gay, gay Nisha. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I know for, uh, Gay is short. Uh, okay, yeah, gay for yeah. short. Uh-huh. I was, I was going to say Gay Nisha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then uh, used to know what's happening. He says, I'm sorry to say every black family I know that left their kids, businesses and money less than a year. Th- yeah. <laughs> them niggas broke, yeah. ran the business to the ground and then blame everyone else because they are homeless um, because they are homeless. Now, I do know for a fact that that what you just said is a sore point with my homie here. Yes, because he talks about that a lot in that. Like you said, grandma goes, grows, and, and a year. He, 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 I think you two have been talking <laughs> because that sounded almost exactly like what Donovan says. So, do you want to expound upon well, that? Well, well, it's actually true. Like, okay, like you have all these big families in the South, right? Mm-hmm. And if you go to the uh, sheriff's records or the tax assessor down in the South, you see all these properties that are that have been in the uh, you know family for generations. Mm-hmm. It, okay, the grandma dies; it goes to the grandkids or the the son or whatever goes. And these uh, black, these young, younger black people are losing the property because they're not paying the property tax because nobody told them. They don't know. They don't know. Right. And these, uh, the, what, the, the master, the, you know, the man is coming in and getting it on pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. We personally know somebody who went yes, through that. Yes, yes. And, and, it's, and it's very sad because as soon as you get a windfall, what happens in our community? Oh, my light's about to be cut off. Can you help me? And, you know, you know and, and, and by nature, we're, we're good spirited people, but that is happening so much down to where we are losing. I mean, the land that you know it's you have is like it's not there anymore. Right. You know. Absolutely. And then Al says, uh, "Wait, did I miss one? Sorry, Holland. You say, Demetri, if I have life insurance through the job, should I get life insurance outside of the job? If, absolutely. Because yeah, you could get fired. Yes. 
you could lose that job. And in most cases, the insurance don't follow you. They don't say, well, we canned you or you've gotten laid off in here. They might give you insurance maybe a year or something, mm-hmm. but it doesn't stay. And so, yes, it's good to have insurance on your own because that will never expire unless you stop paying the premium. Mm-hmm. So, yes, absolutely. We know that the term, the, um, the insurance on the job is usually a term insurance or for the term that yeah. you're there. Um, employers get a huge group discount, yes. which is why they offer it to you because they get it for pennies on the dollar when they offer it to mm-hmm. the employees. And, and here's something a lot of people don't know mm-hmm. me to cut you off. Walmart is making a killing in life on, insurance. In, on insuring their employees mm-hmm. in their corporation. That's where they're getting a lot of their wealth as well. Well, you're talking about their employees that work there? or Well, the, the, the employees' families and all oh, that. Yeah. They, they're insuring they, them. and they Well, they can only get make a killing off of the insuring the family unless they're um, getting a kickback from that. So if they're, well, No, I don't think they're getting a kickback. There was a thing on 2020 where, mm-hmm. they, where they were showing how this, uh, this guy who's a manager at Walmart... And his wife was really sick. And, you know, you know, they kind of mm-hmm. see whatever. And the guy goes, gets insurance or he got insurance. And they look at their employees and, and, and what it is, Walmart says, well, we want that guy to have. He's a smoker. We're going to put insurance on him. OK, so got it. Because yeah. when you say that, I'm also thinking about key people or yeah. key person insurance where mm-hmm. if let's say you mean you had a company or partners. Right. If I die, you insure me mm-hmm. to cover the loss right. of me being gone, gone. because more mm-hmm. than likely if Al you know, he's going to be my widow. And so right. he might come after you. And so you'll have money to keep the business going no, or say right. here, right. this is, um, here's your portion. Now I can, I still right. have, um, the money is still there as if she was yeah. still here. And, and, and that's what Walmart does. So even if you're a cashier and you're a smoker and they mm-hmm. see that you're a smoker, they are making hedging bets that, you know, because of your, your emphysema or whatever that, you know, you're going to die within a certain amount of time. And they're, they're insuring their employees right. based on that. And then, so, Okay, so yeah, so uh, I hope that answers the question, Holland. And um, Alice, having insur- having insurance to some black people um, equivalent is equivalent to some people not having a bank account and wanting to see their paycheck in their hand. Yeah, that, <laughs> I mean, some people are just old school, and you're absolutely right. We have some people who think like that. Mm-hmm. Well, nah, I need to pick my check up. Mm-hmm. I need to see what my paycheck is right. looking like. Well, it's like they'll give you Money your pay stuff. Yeah. yeah, they'll give you your pay stuff. Why would you want to go up to the job every week or every two weeks to get your Paycheck instead of just having it, to do. right? And so I used to know you say because Donovan knows niggas. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we we come in all shapes, forms, and sizes. Hold on a second, I gotta do some house cleaning here. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so um, I, I, you know, I've learned that I have that ability to do yes, that now. Okay. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And then so, uh, yeah. So I mean. We've got to. Oh, well, for one, I wanted to, another point that I wanted to make too is in us believing narratives that aren't true about us, and that, as far as us not having life insurance, is one of them. We do have life insurance. Um, we just misappropriate our funds because, like I said, a lot of it didn't make any sense to me, but it does because I kind of thought about it a little bit further. We have ten percent of what white people have. Mm-hmm. Sorry, as well. But we have $1.3 trillion in our community, but we're broke. But we like life insurance. For whatever reason, we do have life insurance. Um, and uh, the article and the research that I was reading, it says, because a lot of single moms, they do, or single parents is in the black community, they do realize I need some sure. life insurance. You know, Absolutely. something happens to my child or whatever the case mm-hmm. is. Um, I, I want to be able to be taken care or, of. Or would, would it be more so they're in a position at that time to afford life insurance? You know, and they're being totally it is responsible. Very, it is very much mm-hmm. so about affordability. Right. Um, because uh, a lot of people, and that's just not just black people, but a lot of people are like, well, I can't afford life insurance. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a bill. Or I could be doing something else with it. But as I said, when I was a life insurance agent, I would sit in the houses of people who would tell me, let's say I'm here with Donovan, and he tells me, well, you know, I know I need life insurance, but I can't afford life insurance. And as he's telling me that, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, this fool got a 75-inch television <laughs> on his wall. Like, for real, he does. And, and, and then I'm, he's got I'm, a 50-something-inch television in that, right? I can see <laughs> that, that TV and this TV at the same time. Mm-hmm. He's got all the bells and the whistles to everything you can think of this dude and has. And I'm a chain smoker. Well, you're a chain smoker, but you can't afford life insurance. Right. And so in my head, I'm saying, well, sure you can. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe if you cut off some of your cable boxes or right. cut down the smoking, which is not good or for you the anyway. Or the animal treats. All of that. But you know, my brother's also in financial services, and he says that when he sits down with people who have pets, and he says, well, why don't you cut back on the pet expenditures? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Fido's going to the um, to the groomer every right. week. week. Right, and right. Some people, animal <laughs> has their own credit cards. In case emergencies come you up. You know, and the, 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 the high-end the estate treats and <laughs> all this other stuff, they would rather cut off their left pinky than <laughs> to cut back on their animals, yeah. you know, yeah. because it's like, that, that. those are my children. Right, right. How dare you? Right, right. I would rather die mm-hmm. with no insurance than to have my animals go without. Well, in my defense, mm-hmm. I am able to afford the animal stuff. Yeah, but and, you're, the, yeah. you're an anomaly okay. in some of those cases. You can uh, you, you haven't gotten everything you have because you're stupid right. and you don't understand wealth. Right, right. And I'm not saying that about anybody else who don't mm-hmm. um, have life insurance, but it just comes, it, 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 there's a lack of education. And as I said, I would sit down with people um, who don't want to be educated. Mm. They don't want to be educated about it because... For me to come in your house and tell you, well, maybe you should cut off the cable. <gasps> it's football season. Well, you know, football season is nice, but what if you die? You know, or take your my- children are uninsured. And another thing um, that people need to realize, because I know you say this a lot, which <laughs> makes a lot of sense, but a lot of people just don't know this either, is that you, you, you say stuff like, well, if you know you live in a hood or you live in a dangerous area... Why not get your child or your son or whoever, Ray Ray and Pookie, as you would say, insured. But if Ray Ray and Pookie are committing a crime, that insurance or a felony. Yeah, I know. They die in a a case of a felony. That insurance policy does not pay. Right. It's void. Because they tell you those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I tell you, says, I won't lie. I have insurance on my animals, too. Well, (laughs) but there's nothing wrong with you having insurance on your animals Mm -hmm. because you have insurance on yourself Mm -hmm. and And your your children, too. Mm -hmm. But there's people who it's the total opposite. I just can imagine. (laughs) And I I, listen, I don't have pets, but you just listen to Donovan. Sometimes talk about having to take his animals to the vet. That's why I'm like, you know, sometimes with six hundred dollar visit. And I'm like, ooh, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I know I don't have pets now. <laughs> yeah. You know, because... But you guys are you guys are responsible because a lot of people... And I, me and Donovan talk about this, too. They feel like, well, I can have a dog. Right. There's a lot that comes with a dog. I don't need no insurance yeah. on the dog. She has something happened to it. I just give it some of this over-the-counter yeah, stuff. Yeah, I give it some uh, Robitussin. Some Robitussin, <laughs> right? Or some hot water. Yeah, yeah because uh, uh, in my dog's defense, you know, dogs have allergies. They have stuff that is just... Right, unbelievable. And as as my dog gets older, she's going to have a hip problem, which is going to cost me thousands. But so that of makes dollars. sense to have yeah. an, a, a pet insurance. It just yeah. makes sense, yeah. right? Sixty dollars a month, right? And so you used to know, he said, maybe I should put my dog Ace down as my beneficiary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some people do that. Yes, as a matter of fact, um, what was his name? Um, Baron Hilton. Yeah. The. Um, the owner or the creator of Hilton, the mm-hmm. Hilton Hotels, Paris Hilton's yeah. grandfather. Father, sure did. A Conrad Hilton is Conrad his name. Conrad Hilton. Mm-hmm. He did that. When he died, yeah. he left a great amount of his, uh, it was, I can't remember, it was hundreds of millions of dollars mm-hmm. of his estate to the Humane Society. Mm-hmm. And his heirs was like, I don't think so. Right. And they successfully challenged that, which is why and how the um, Hiltons have money now. But he was like, I want to screw yeah. you, but I'm leaving my mm-hmm. uh, my money well, to the Humane Society. Well, remember that one heiress? She was a hotel heiress as well. She was the, known as the Queen of Mean. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, Imelda. Yeah, yeah. What, whatever her name was, uh-huh. and she left a lot of money to her uh, pets as well. Right, but then you know people could contest that and say, mm-hmm. you know what, Granddad was off his rock. Right, right. But that's why you know who controls the animal. Right. Controls. Well, you, you know, you can write me down. You know. <laughs> I take care of Belle. No, Deanna. No, Deanna does a little better job. Oh yeah, (laughs) I'd be like, Belle, get off me. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, I know you're joking. I used to know, but a lot of people. Some people do it. They do. Yeah, really. But it's just it's it's just important to have those things taken care of. Yeah, yeah. You should always have those things taken care of. Like you know, I have my daughter's an only child, and I'm gonna leave her a significant amount of money. If something happens to me, and I can justify it and say, "Well, my daughter's grown now," I don't because when she was younger, I had a lot more, mm-hmm. 
Because they say if you you have young children, write the insurance policy as if you might die today. Same, right. And if you have children, let's say you have a child that's 10, your child still needs to finish grade school, elementary school, uh, not elementary, uh, middle school, high school. school. What do they do in high school? They have prom, they have right. graduation, they have all is. these things. Mm-hmm. Um, then what they're going to do is go to college. And so you want to yeah. have enough insurance to see them through at least college and maybe get married because you're not going to be there. So you want them to have those things. If and, you have a daughter. Well, I'm, well yeah. I have a daughter. Yeah. So, yeah. But even if you have a son, you want, you want that money to take care of them as if you were there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, when they die, they don't do that. Yeah. And I've also, and we talked about this quite a bit before, but I've also talked to um, a lot of men. And I find this to be kind of prevalent in the Hispanic community for some reason. Where they say, um, I don't want to leave a rich so Sancho could come in here mm-hmm. and be all up in my bed and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, first of all, you Tay, ain't going to be in the uh, bed. First of all, Tay, I want you to disregard what she's now saying because that isn't the, the, the plan. But go ahead. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay. Um, but so they, I say, well, first of all, you're not going to be in the bed. You're going to be in the grave. In the grave. So why were you trying to control what's going on from the grave and... What you also need to think about is you not leaving your wife money makes her have to do a few things. That makes her have to make decisions she would normally she wouldn't ordinarily make if she had money. And that is meeting Sancho at the bar mm-hmm. or somewhere who may not have the best intentions for her or your children. Right. So she moves Sancho into the house. Um, and she doesn't really know Sancho. And then Sancho starts beating her, starts beating the kids and doing all kind of mm-hmm. other stuff that you can't imagine Absolutely. because you let your, what do they say in the uh, Hispanic community, machismo? Yeah, yeah, the machismo. You let your male ego get in the way. And so mm-hmm. now Sancho is in the, under the same roof with your children and your wife right. doing things to them that you cannot imagine. So don't put her in a situation to have to choose a man and struggling. Or uh, you got to think of it like this. If you love your wife so much and, uh, you know, like, like if you don't, I don't blame you if you don't like your kids, but your wife, your spouse, what if she, you know, because of the situation you put her in financially, she, she turns to alcohol. She turns Which to Which a drugs, lot of people do. Right? Or she loses the house mm-hmm. and the kids have to move out of the great neighborhood that you had them in. Man, right? And have to go to a school that you wouldn't want them in. Or she's out there working two and three jobs now. And so your kids are unsupervised at the home and your daughter comes up pregnant or your son gets somebody else pregnant or the kids mm-hmm. start doing drugs and stuff because you forced your wife to have to go and make up for the income that you provided. And then usually when I would say that to them, they would have a paradigm shift. Yeah. They would say, oh. Yeah, that makes sense. So why are you trying to, you know, hold on to your manhood from the grave? <laughs> yeah. You're actually are doing your family a disservice. Right. Right. And so good point. Holland says, can you recommend some good low price life insurance companies? Um, off the top of my head, I cannot um, hit my inbox after the show or even uh, not now, but after the show uh, to remind me. And I can think of some um, somewhere to go or somewhere to lead you. Like I said, I don't have the ability to sell life insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, I got out of sell- selling life insurance because I did not enjoy the feast or famine part of it. I'm sinking. I'm sinking in this chair. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't enjoy the feast or famine uh, part of the life insurance uh, com- uh, industry because on one hand, you make a lot of money, but then on the other hand, y- you may not make some money. Now, maybe that was just um, in part to my salesmanship, mm-hmm. but I didn't enjoy that part of it. So, uh, but yes, remind me. And Al says, some people can't wait for their loved ones to pass just so they can cash in on their insurance. And yes, that is a real true fear. Yeah. A lot of people are waiting out. Mom, let me try to adjust my seat. Right guys, hold on a second. There you go. They're trying to wait out mom or dad mm-hmm. or whoever in order to get rich. Mm-hmm. And so I understand that as a real fear. Some people say, well, I'm not going to get insurance because they might kill me. Mm-hmm. Well, I think people, if you're thinking about killing somebody for life insurance, I would like to leave this on your mind. Don't. Because the first person they come after is the beneficiary. Is the beneficiary. Well, did Miss Johnson have a life insurance policy? Oh, yeah. Here's a life insurance policy. You're okay. Mm-hmm. Well, who are her beneficiaries? Okay, her beneficiaries was her husband. Okay. 
And you mean to tell me she just took this policy out six months ago? Mm-hmm. All right. Or they increased it six months ago? Mr. Johnson, we need to talk to you. Um, and another thing before you, you go to your next mm-hmm. uh, thing. Oh, podcast will no, no, be no, right back. Yeah. Um, but just for the people that are listening, uh, important documents like a life insurance policy, mm-hmm. put it someplace yes. where uh, people could find it. You could uh, put it with the county assessor, make a copy with the county assessor, because a lot, nine times out of ten, what happens is a grandma dies or somebody dies and you can't find the will. Right. Or the insurance or the policy. Insurance, right. yeah. Or tell somebody you trust. Right. 